Welcome and thank you for joining us today as we explore your top database security challenges and how to solve them using Microsoft SQL 2016. My name is Anissa Teich and I'm the Director of Marketing at Talon and I'm joined by our veteran database architect, Kathy Jewett. And during the next half hour or so, we'll break down database security essentials and the various features and functionalities available to us in Microsoft SQL Server 2016 and how each of these features can be employed to better secure your data at rest, in motion, and at various access levels. So how did we get here? Why is securing your data more important than ever? Data is growing faster than ever, and by 2020, about 1.7 megabytes of new information will be created every second for every human on the planet. Let that sink in for a second. Clearly none of us working in the data field will be out of a job anytime soon, which is great news, but we need to continually evolve our skills and strategies to keep up with all of this, right? So where's all this data coming from? The more features or cool stuff that's baked into our use of mobile or desktop apps, the more we leverage pro uh, programs like PowerPoint or download and listen to large audio or video files, we further anchor ourselves to data. And as we access and create this new data, there are a variety of places it can be stored and accessed, but with that breadth and variety comes risk. Well, simply put, there's just so much of it and there's no sign of it slowing down. So while the everyday user may not be as tuned into those risks and their impact, those of us working in data every day and on behalf of our organizations, of course, where their volume and risk associated with data is multiplied, we have all these kinds of things going on in our mind all the time. The worldwide cost of data theft is trending upward, and the U.S. is experiencing that impact at the highest level, with data theft costs totaling more than $7 million in 2016. So what are some of the causes of data loss? A true data crime or theft is certainly a large portion of it and a preventable one, but there's also a huge percentage of loss associated with system errors or human errors, both also preventable. So all three of these causes should be part of your data protection strategy. When you think of your current data strategy or needs to evolve or expand it, you need to think beyond just IT. Data is being created by everyone, and so securing it should be everyone's responsibility. Training is a huge component of a modern data protection strategy, and it should infiltrate any organization's culture, not just a section of the handbook that is quickly forgotten after onboarding. But on the technical side, there are certainly things we can do to proactively support and continue to evolve your company's data strategy. So now I'll turn it over to Kathy as we go through what are some of the most important data security activities and how you can achieve these with Microsoft SQL Server 2016. All right, so thanks, Anissa. <clears throat> Today, data, data is vulnerable to attack in many ways. Attacks can occur while the data resides in the database, commonly referred to as data at rest. Attacks have grown to also include data being transferred across a network when that happens, it's referred to as data in transit. It's that split second of time it takes to transfer data from the database to the device you're using to view it or change it makes it susceptible to interception and theft. SQL injection is a form of hacking where an intruder hijacks the SQL statements used to derive the data from the database and makes the data available to both you and the attacker. These are all forms of attacks on data that can occur on any data-driven application. It doesn't matter what device you're using. The attacks have grown to include data access. This means when who has access within your own company to the data that you're, you're using. These attacks usually happen when improper roles are, are set up for users within the organization. Have, has your organization put together a plan for who needs access to what data? Who has access to your backup files that must be taken of your data every day? Can anyone come in and walk off 
with one of your critical data sets by stealing a backup file. That's referred to as data theft. How can we protect ourselves from the risks of our data would be taken in any of the above ways. The best solution is always a layered security approach. The following slides will outline several features in SQL Server 2016 that will significantly lessen the risk of your data from being stolen or someone just coming in and walking off with it. Data at rest is secured in SQL Server 2016 in several ways. There are features such as Always Encrypted, which works on the specific columns of sensitive data within the database. Data masking will fully or partially mask the data within a column of a table. Role level security works on entire roles of a result set where only authorized persons can view that particular set of data. Transparent data encryption works on backup files where it will encrypt the entire backup so that it cannot be read in plain text. Your data when it's in transit will be secured by always encrypted and data masking. Data hacking is prevented using always encrypted. Data access that we talked about where only specific people within an organization should see the data is resolved using always encrypted, role level security, and data masking. Data theft is prevented by always encrypted and transparent data encryption. And we'll get into the details of each of these. But as you can see, there is a layered security approach with each one of these methods of hacking or data intrusion. So next we'll go through the individual SQL Server 2016 security features in more detail. Starting with Always Encrypted, this feature protects your data both at rest and in motion. The encryption and decryption is performed by the client driver.net libraries at the client side. There's no performance problems on the SQL Server database itself. The encryption keys are generated and stored outside the database. Authorized users only with access to secured encryption keys can see the data. Your IT staff can no longer see sensitive data. So it's not a risk to the business to allow IT to do all they need to do to maintain your data in a healthy database without giving them access to secure data. There are two types of um, always encrypted. There's deterministic and random. Always encrypted is a column level security measure where your sensitive data columns like social security numbers, credit cards, um, phone numbers, email addresses, that type of thing can be encrypted within the database and while the data is moving. Deterministic is used for columns where data searching is needed. The random provides a higher level of security, but you don't have search capabilities. So you'll have to decide which one fits which columns for your situation. As we can see here on the SQL Server side, the data is encrypted within the database. It then moves through to the client side using the ADO enhanced ADO.NET libraries to do actually perform the current encryption and then the application would display the data. Here we see on the client on the server side on the SQL Server database without always encrypted running you can see the social security number which is sensitive data in clear text. Now with always encrypted, we run that data through the enhanced ADO.NET library and it now encrypts the social security number 
so that your IT staff can't see it. The only people who can see it are the ones that have the security set up and the role set up so that they can see it. Next, a user with the proper access makes a query to the database. You can see the social security numbers in clear text that they send through the ADO.NET library over to SQL Server to retrieve a query. When that happens, the ADO.NET library has now encrypted the data in the parameter that went into that query. The result set from your query then gets sent, and as you saw that go by, it was encrypted until it reached its destination um, and the ADO enhanced ADO.NET library decrypted that data so the proper user can see what they're looking for. The encryption storage keys in a hierarchy is, as you see, has a very layered approach. First thing that happens is there's a service master key that is created by the SQL Server setup and it's encrypted within Windows Data Protection API. So you're going to get that no matter what. You, the first thing that happens is a service master key is generated. The, the keys are stored outside of the server that your SQL Server instance is running on. And as each database that's using Always Encrypted is generated, a database master keys are protected by the service master keys. So it's a layered approach again. Other encryption hierarchies stacking additional layers are possible. You can even get more sophisticated if you'd like. The service master key and all database master keys are called symmetric keys. There are asymmetric keys um, and there's that you, you can use, but typically you're going to use the symmetric key approach. So in order to gain access to your data, you would have to know the service master key and the database master key in order to get after your encrypted data. Those are both stored either in a certificate store or you can also store them in Azure. In SQL Azure, it's off, off-site of the server that your, your uh, database is running on. The next feature that is offered in SQL Server 2016 is Transparent Data Encryption, also known as TDE. This feature typically acts upon an entire file or an entire database. Uh, where Always Encrypted is a column-based feature, Transparent Data Encryption is more of a full database feature. Okay, so it encrypts the encryption on stored, including your log and backup files. It, it secures against stolen and lost backups or media access. The, the work that's going on for TDE happens within SQL Server, and that's different than always encrypted, where it's the client driver that's doing the work. Um, it supports memory as optimized OLTP tables, so you're good there. So for, for Intel ANSI hardware acceleration, so you can get that too. Um, you can see it's using the same setup with the service master key and the database master key that Always Encrypted is using. So though that's where things are similar between the two. So you can see here's an example where trans of transparent data encryption and how data actually looks in your backup file. Your data is, protection, is protected at rest in both the data and the log files, the MDF and the LDF. Legal compliance laws, regulation, and guidelines established in various industries. Encryption data using AES and 3DES encryption algorithms without changing existing applications you don't have to do anything to your application in order to use this feature. 
You can see in this example, the non-TDE backup file is readable. I can do open it up in Notepad and do a search for social security number or a particular individual's name and find it. After TDE is run, that same backup file is encrypted. You can search on it all day long and you're not going to find a particular person's name using a search feature. It is not readable. So what's the difference between Always Encrypted and TDE? As we said earlier, Always Encrypted works on a column level within each database table. TDE works on the entire database. Always Encrypted, the encryption occurs at the client side. On TDE, the, the encryption occurs in the, at the server. With Always Encryption, your server doesn't know what your encryption keys are. They're stored off-site or away from your server. In TDE, the server knows what your encryption keys are. They're both using the service and the database encryption keys, but they're stored in different places. Always Encrypted, data and memory is encrypted. With TDE, data and memory is in plain text, so you need, you need to be aware of that. With always encryption, data travels th across the network is encrypted. With TDE, data travels in the network in plain text. But typically, you're going to use TDE on backup files, so your backup file would be fully encrypted. The next feature we're going to talk about is role level security. Role level security addresses the data access layer and is focused on who can see what and who's authorized to see what. In this example, you see our DBA here with his coffee and his laptop is trying to make sure the database is up and running in a healthy manner. Emma, who's a salesperson, has her particular customers that she wants to see some data from. But there's no real reason that your DBA needs to see all of Emma's uh, client's private information. So we want to secure that. Make sure that your DBA can do his job, and so can Emma. So we restrict access to specific da data rows based on a user's ID or role. This is implemented using a user-defined function, and it does have support for memory-optimized tables. Role-level security filter predicate it has two different types of predicates, filter predicates and block predicates. This particular slide is showing you what, how filter predicates work, where in this example, your regional manager in green has access to the entire data set. Your Northwest user in purple only has access to certain rows with the sales territory region of Northwest. And then your central user only has access to the data in central. So as you can see, there's some, some overlap where the regional manager has access to everything. So at the end, after this query is run by the Northwest user, they're only going to see the four rows that they're allowed to see. The central user is only going to see the three rows that they're allowed to see, but the regional manager can still see the entire data set. This is how filter predicates work. The second type is called a blocked predicate. It basically blocks any read or write uh, operations and it will return an error if you've um, tried to violate one of the security procedures. So in this, you're going to say grant update or insert to, to a particular table called DBO customers to your Northwest user. And then you're going to grant update and insert to your central users. And then you're going to, uh, going to apply a security policy and you're going to add a blocked predicate using 
a table value function called row level security and that security user's ID. And then you're going to say block predicate again for your after insert, so um, on your customer's table. Then you're going to execute an update statement. So if Northwest user tries to update data that belongs to the central user, you're going to get an error message back saying it has a blocked predicate that conflicts with this operation and it just won't let you do it. Next feature is dynamic data masking. This one um, is really handy where you can fully mask a data or you can mask data in part. So if you want to show portions of an email address or portions of a social security number, you can use partial data masking to accomplish that. If you want to block the whole column, you can use full data masking to accomplish that. And again, dynamic data masking works on a column level basis for each table that you display in your database. It is possible to combine these features together. So you can use dynamic data masking and always encrypted together on the same row of data. Uh, we've done this and here's an example for it. We call it the yin and yang of security. <laughs> Okay, dynamic data masking complements other security features, auditing, encryption, role level security. It's highly recommended to use it in conjunction to better protect your sensitive data in the database. So if they get through one layer of security, they may not get through the other. So it's highly recommended to encrypt your sensitive data and then mask what you need to mask. SQL Server also offers an enhanced auditing architecture so that you can track activities from the server and database into one audit log. Define which events are included in the audit log and define how the events will be stored and reported on. So you have a particular audit server specification, then you'd have database audit specifications, and then perhaps a separate database has different audit specifications. So you can run all of those into one SQL Server audit file. You can go to a security event log, an application event log. You can um, target those to a SQL Server table or a file. All of this is generated using SQL Server extended events, which is a feature that's been available for a few versions now within SQL Server. So enhanced auditing with extended events. Extended events are extremely handy in the SQL Server environment. They're also very flexible. Um, you can define extended events to basically track about anything that's going on within your SQL Server environment. It's lightweight and actually has less of a performance impact than profiler traces do. Uh, it captures events through extended events and tr tracks success or failure of server operations. So you can get both server and database activity coming into the same log. Here, we're seeing a restore of a database has started. Um, and it's just about completing your restore. So you're seeing every step in your trace message of what's happening during your restore database session. Once you've tracked all of your SQL Server events out to a table or a file, uh, what's commonly used now is to use the power of Power BI to actually create some very handy visualizations for Power BI. As a matter of fact, there is a SQL DB audit dashboard 
that uses Power BI behind the scenes to basically give you a display of all of your extended events by date, the number of failures, the number of servers you're monitoring, and basically perform a lot of monitoring activity for you. This is also very handy with the SQL Server uh, Analysis Services tabular environment where it's kind of difficult to find monitoring, great monitoring tools. You can use extended events and Power BI together to provide that monitoring capability in that environment as well. So within Power BI, you have another tool, another visualization available that gives you the site stats, your replication stats, your management points, um, overall health of your server and your databases can be recorded here. Thanks, Kathy. Well, that about wraps up our chat today about database security solutions leveraging SQL Server 2016. I hope this gets those gears turning about ways in which you can implement a more comprehensive and proactive data security strategy. And with that in mind, we're here to help. Our veteran experts like Kathy have worked with clients like yourself nationwide to better manage their data as part of essential operations or an innovative business strategy and make that data more organized and visually accessible and actionable. If you're interested in learning more, please visit talon.com.